Yeah, he's talking about that's how uh, aliens travel around from popping in and out of black holes and in and out of singularities that are all over the place. And I guess that's maybe that's even how uh, wormholes are, are, are function. Uh, you know, there's supposedly wormholes all over the Earth. There's they have one in Area 51. They have one in, in Giza. They have one. And, and, you know, even maybe all the different nodal points on the Earth. Um, like that thing, I can't remember the name of the doctor, but David Wilcock was talking about on this presentation, all the different, or and, and Richard Hoagland's been talking about this forever, where you have, like, the tetrahedron on the Earth, and then you, 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 you multiply it into a more, more complex one, the icosahedron. And those nodal points, when they hit the Earth, they found those nodal points just by finding where all of these... Um, um, you know, uh, disappearances of ships are occurring all over the world, and then, like, just interesting things happening all over the world, and then they just looked at them, and, and it turned out that they followed the patterns of this, um, I, you know, the nodal points of the acosylhedron. Um, so it's kind of like imagining, superimposing this, um, this ever-growing latticework of um, tetrahedrons creating this really complex... I guess, I can't remember what it's called, icosahedron um, along the edges of the Earth. And they, it matches perfectly. It's really amazing. It's on my website. It's on David Wilcox's, um, it's on my, my uh, sacred geom geometry page and on David Wilcox's presentation. But I mean, one is perfectly on LA. One is um, in Bimini, you know, which is where the, um, the, uh, the uh, Bermuda Triangle is. One is at I think even at uh, Easter Island, one is right there in, La in Tibet, Lhasa, Tibet, uh, Timbuktu, um, the Gulf of Aden, where they're, you know, Aaron McCollum, the super soldier, says they have a uh, they have an underwater uh, wormhole there, um, and uh, yeah, it's like all over the place. It's amazing um, if you look at it. But, uh, and, you know, and obviously you have the Marfa Lights. This is right there at 19.5 degrees, 33 latitude, which is within 100 meters of the Great Pyramid. You can do your research yourself. It's where the, it's where um, Cydonia on Mars is. It's where the, uh, the swirling hole of Jupiter is. It's where, um, it's where the tetrahedron would touch the edges of the sphere. So that's kind of just an aside, but... Um, but and he but he said some weird stuff, man, and he said it in a really nonchalant way. Is this guy crazy? And if and if not, how? Why in the hell weren't people like gasping for air when he said that NASA took a photo of an object like four times the size of Jupiter passing through our solar system? And I saw the photo that he claimed was that object. It's the sun here, and it's this big-ass black dot next to it. And supposedly that passed through our solar system in the year 2003, which is when the year that Nancy Leader, the lady who channels the gray aliens from her computer, predicted that Planet X was going to come. So apparently Planet X did come in 2003 when Nancy Leader said it was going to come. Only... We didn't hear about it, even though NASA took pictures of it and says it's four times the size of Jupiter. We kind of didn't notice that, and like none of our amateur astronomers noticed that. Like, how the hell could none of our amateur astronomers notice that if the picture was that big? I think the picture is even on my website. I'll have to look, but um, my God, Nassim, don't be so uh, casual in the way that you say that. You need to be a little more like David Wilcock. If David Wilcock had said that, he would have been like, Oh my God, a tribute, you know? Four times, are you listening to me? Four times the size of Jupiter! Ah! Seriously, that's pretty... In and he said another weird thing. He said his grandfather lived to the age of 137 years old. Nobody in recorded history has lived to 137 years old. And he said that very casually as well. Oh, yeah, my grandfather. He lived to 137 years old. Whatever. Yeah, he should have put a little bit more stress on that, too. I mean, how the hell did your grandfather live to 137 years old? I guess he lived in, like, Iran. I mean, I, I do believe there's people that old and even older, but my God, why is it your grandfather, you know? I mean, I don't know. But anyways, it's, you know, don't confuse the message with the messenger. I really like his message in that you know, the center of the universe can be anywhere. You know, if you want to look at... And of course, 
you know, if obviously there's concentrations of these energies, the vortexes of where, you know, you, you, you would have the lattice work all over the universe, but then you would have these, you know, def defined orbs, you know, built from the vibration of the universe going, creating the planets and the suns and everything in our bodies and stuff. Those are the vortexes of it. So, um, anyways, you can look at basically what he, the idea is that you can look at anything as the center of the universe. Nothing, you don't have to have a singular center of the universe. Anything can be the center of the universe because the black holes are everywhere and they go infinitely small. Now, he said some stuff that I really, that I didn't understand and I'd like him to explain more or somebody else and that he said that they go infinitely small and I think he implied that there can be actual universes just like our universe infinitely small. So there's, so there, so, you know, not only are universes, you know, if you look on the, the Hubble telescope in the deep field view, you see, you know, at the size of a, of a pinpoint at arm's length, a thousand galaxies, and then you go out smart farther and you, you know, you go out, out far, as far, as far as you want, and there's always going to be universe. And that's how the universe is infinitely large, but the infinite, the universe is also infinitely large and in that it, a, a universe like what we exist in now can in the same exact form, shape, and everything can exist in an infinitely small and under our terms of de definition of size can exist in infinitely small. So inside of my hand, inside of the 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 center of the um, you know proton, the quark of the proton in my hand of the you know water molecule atom, hydrogen atom in my hand, there is a universe in there with like actors and people and people living their lives and um, drama and space battles and all that. So then there's also one here in my hand over here. Is that what you're saying? And that and that we're and that the universe we're living inside is actually say inside of a dog toenail that's that's often unfathomably larger universe than what we exist. That's what I understood him of saying. Um, now, I don't view it that way. I mean, I do believe that energy can go into um, but um, into a singularity in, in that kind of a uh, uniform manner with the tetrahedral shapes. But I think there is a finite size because there has to be because it comes out again. That's how, that's how gravity works. Gravity comes in from the universe all the way down into the center of the center of the earth. But then it bounces out from the center of the Earth and it comes out again. That's how that's how aliens use anti-gravity technology by turning off the deflection fields, um, you know, deflecting the energy that comes in from the outer, pushing them down, and making it not push them down so much, but then allowing them to be pushed up by the energy that bounces out from the center of the Earth again. So if the energy bounces out from the center of the Earth again, there has to be a point where it turns around and comes out again. So there has to be a finite singularity at the center of the earth. And if there's one there, there has to be one everywhere. And it's just different, uh, you know, sizes of how big that finite singularity actually is. Um, but you know, that doesn't mean that you can't, oh, there goes a cop. That doesn't mean that you can't, um, tr you know, travel from one galaxy to the next by going into the singularity. Just like, you know, I talked to my mother on the cell phone and the, and the, and the, the, uh, the message is picked up from the chip on this phone through the airwaves and then pops up again on her cell phone. You know, you can physically travel your, you know, since your, your spaceship and your body is created out of just a light signature, you can transfer that light signature through the airwaves, through the beacons, right? Like the, like the, uh, the uh, radio towers. Well, the suns would be the radio towers from one sun radio tower to the next sun and pop out there. I, I do agree that you can do that, but as far as the universe being like infinitely small, you know, like the way he maybe implied or I understood, I don't believe that. Another thing he said was that, you know, if we all are actually the center of the, our own universe, being, this, you know, the way that I, I described, then you could create your own universe, but then how, but then you can't create other, other people's universe because they have to live in the universe with you. Um, well, actually, I think you can create everybody else in your universe 
even though the unit live in the universe with you, because every time you create the universe that you live in, you're just going to the universe that those other people live in already, but it's just a different version of them. That's what Bashar said. Nassim Haramein should listen to that one, uh, that one, um, speech that Bashar gave. And, and I, I guess it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't really ex exist here in this dimension, although it can exist and does exist. And it, but it exists even more so in the fifth dimension where the Basharians are moving off onto the, 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 uh, the Eli or the, no, no, the, uh, the Sathani are moving off into where they can create, can continuously go into a parallel universe where everybody is different when they want, if they want everybody to be different, but it doesn't, but it's okay with them. It doesn't matter because the inner, the universe that they're going into where everybody's different is just a universe that already exists where everybody's different. So it doesn't, it doesn't affect the universe that you just left because, because the universe that you just left, there's there, that version of you that you left from will still be there it'll just be another aspect of your higher self creating that vision of what it wants to experience in throughout the universe or maybe but i mean now i'm now i'm now i'm, I'm definitely you know veering from what nasim haramin said but i'm just i'm just bringing that into answering that little comment that i'm pretty sure he said um and but then that goes into a whole another discussion which i'm not going to go into you know like for example um you know, well, maybe there aren't an infinite amount of parallel universes and somebody leaves on this earth, they're not going to exist on this universe, but they will on another, maybe in a higher dimension or not this one. But anyways, that's a whole nother subject. But as far as not the impairment concerned, um, um, yeah, basically, uh, he was, he, he, ha he has his, uh, these, these little artworks where he, where he actually shows the little drawings that he made of these, uh, the triangles that grow out. Now, um, um, Dan Winter, I saw, I'm going to do a video about Dan Winter pretty soon, but I'm going to watch more Dan Winter stuff. Out of all the people I've seen on YouTube, Dan Winter's the one who fascinates me the most. He's the one who I think is the smartest, um, and the most well-read. Um, David Wilcock is the best presenter of the most interesting stuff, but this guy, Dan Winter has got like whew, a whole bunch of stuff to say. But anyways, he had this little this, this little like drawing of the same exact thing that Nassim Haramein did with the with the um, the tetrahedrons, the little triangles. Only he did it with squares, you know, where you have the square and then the different squares grow off of it off into eternity. So, um, anyways, that's like another another way to imagine it, I guess. But um, but uh, yeah, there's little uh, drawings he made of the uh, different tetrahedrons growing out into this lattice, and then they connect to the ones outside. Uh, it was a good little, uh, description of how, you know, quantum mechanics and, um, you know, atoms are actually structured and when they, so, you know, see what he was saying, it doesn't matter how many, how big they make their, uh, particle colliders, they could make it the size of the earth. Every time they blow up the atom, they're, they're always going to get these same little configuration things. And it's not going to tell them anything because they're just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's go down. And I agree with that. It's just going to, as far as we can detect, it's just going it, to, it's just going to go smaller and smaller, and smaller. And we just need to realize that, that it's all, um, the, the structure of the atom is just, is just a, uh, it's, it's, it's a consistent, um, um, my God, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, um, it's when all sides are equilateral. It's all, it's just a consistent holographic thing that goes down. So, you know, the boson and the quarks and this and that, they're just, they're just what they can detect of a very coherent, like maybe even the golden mean spiral energy that already exists and that will exist forever. It's just, it shoots out and it follows the little, and it does follow a golden mean spiral, by the way. The pictures of the Hadron Collider, the, the protons coming out. So it's just, they're just, that's just um, what they're always going to get. And that's what it's shaped like. And um, so I think that's how they should actually describe the, you know, the structure of the atom. It's just, the valency shell thing is really interesting. And, you know, I agree. I, I like the idea of that. But even the valency shell I think can be portrayed the same way that, um, you know, the, the, um, the valency shells of our planets are where it goes down in the, uh, what is it? The quadratic, the, the, um, the, 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 uh, golden mean spiral going in and, uh, it, you know, the, and, and, uh, 
Anyways, I'm out of time. I didn't explain that the best, but that's my best that I can do. Huh.